It's no secret that climate change and plastic pollution are the greatest environmental threats of our time. But what's often left out of the conversation is the huge role plastics play in the climate crisis. From cradle to grave, at every single stage of their life cycle, plastics emit greenhouse gases that contribute to climate change. In fact, if plastic were a country, it would be the world's fifth largest greenhouse gas emitter after China, the US, India, and Russia. The plastic life cycle begins with the extraction of fossil fuels like oil and gas from deep within the Earth. Mining, drilling, and fracking all release greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. Fracking releases especially large amounts of methane, a dangerously potent greenhouse gas that's 28 times more effective at trapping heat than carbon dioxide. Extracted fossil fuels are then transported to cracking plants and refineries, where ethane and propane are extracted and chemically broken down into ethylene and propylene, the building blocks for plastic production. Ethylene and propylene polymers are chemically modified to produce one of seven plastic resins. Chemical additives are then used to enhance and suppress different characteristics that give plastic such a dizzying array of uses. Plastic resins are then heated, pressurized, and cooled to make nurdles, which are the pre-production plastic pellets that manufacturers shape and mold into usable products. Refining, polymerization, and plasticization are all extremely energy-intensive processes that emit over 2 million tons of carbon dioxide into Earth's atmosphere every year. Once manufactured, plastic products and packaging are shipped by plane, train, boat, and truck to consumers and retailers all around the world, releasing even more greenhouse gases as they go. When plastic products reach the end of their useful life, sometimes just minutes after they're purchased, they're disposed of in a variety of ways. And just about every method of plastic waste management releases carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. In landfills, plastic waste emits methane, when it's incinerated, plastic emits greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide and nitrogen oxides into the atmosphere. Recycling reduces emissions by about 50%, but it still releases greenhouse gases that contribute to climate change. Even worse, most people aren't aware that plastics are not infinitely recyclable, so they tend to consume more recyclable plastic resins like PET and HDPE. Eventually, even these plastics make their way into landfills and incinerators. When plastic enters the environment as a pollutant, it doesn't biodegrade or break down into its raw components, like a leaf becomes soil. Instead, it's exposed to UV rays and natural forces like wind, rain, and waves that make it weak and brittle. As plastic breaks apart into tiny fragments called microplastics, it releases greenhouse gases like methane and ethylene. Ultimately, the plastic life cycle has an enormous carbon footprint and is a major contributor to global warming. In fact, the plastic life cycle accounts for 3.4% of the world's total greenhouse gas emissions. That's double the carbon emissions of the aviation industry. The only question now is how this impacts the ocean. The ocean is the world's largest carbon sink absorbing 25% of all greenhouse gas emissions and about 90% of the heat they produce, the ocean has effectively protected us from the worst impacts of climate change. But plastic production is expected to triple by 2050 in the US alone, which means greenhouse gas emissions associated with the plastic life cycle will rise to unprecedented levels. And our oceans are taking the heat, literally. In fact, the top 700 meters of the ocean have warmed by 0.4 degrees Fahrenheit since 1969. As the ocean warms, it becomes less and less capable of absorbing carbon dioxide because CO2 is more soluble in cold water. With less CO2 absorbed by the ocean, more of this heat-trapping greenhouse gas would stay in our atmosphere, and that would accelerate climate change. Rising ocean temperatures are already causing coral reefs to bleach and die off. These ecosystems support 25% of all marine life, including seafood species consumed by humans, and are absolutely vital to global food security. Rising ocean temperatures also disrupt natural behaviors like migration, reproduction, feeding, and even metabolism, all of which can wreak havoc on the marine food chain that millions of people depend on. 
melting ice sheets and glaciers cause sea levels to rise, which is a direct threat to people living in coastal communities and on low-lying islands. Habitat loss from sea level rise can also have a devastating impact on species who rely on very specific territories to survive. Climate change also leads to more frequent and severe weather events like heat waves, droughts, floods, and storms. Higher than average sea levels can lead to more devastating storm surges and flooding that can take lives and cripple local economies. Hurricanes, cyclones, and typhoons are fueled by seasonally warmer ocean temperatures. However, rising ocean temperatures can cause them to become more intense and happen more frequently, causing more devastation with less time for recovery between storms. These climate-related disasters can have catastrophic consequences and are a top driver of humanitarian need and human suffering, especially in the world's poorest countries. But climate change isn't just warming our oceans, it's also making them more acidic. When carbon dioxide dissolves in seawater, it reacts with water molecules to form carbonic acid. This chemical reaction threatens the fundamental chemical balance of the ocean from pole to pole. Ocean acidification contributes to coral bleaching and can have a significant impact on keystone species like clams, oysters, and mussels by reducing the availability of the carbonate ions that they need to build their shells. Some studies suggest that ocean acidification can cause declines in the population of phytoplankton, which are the foundation of the marine food chain. It can also lead to disruptive and harmful algal blooms that interfere with ocean-based industries like tourism and fishing. Ocean acidification can even cause physiological distress in some marine species, making it more difficult for them to find food, avoid predators, and fight diseases. The impacts of climate change will only get worse faster as more greenhouse gases are released into the atmosphere. To mitigate the impact of plastics on our environment and climate, we must reduce our use of single-use plastics, recycle more effectively, and, most importantly, we must transition to the circular economy, a regenerative economic system designed to minimize waste, maximize resource efficiency, and promote sustainability by designing products, processes, and business models that make it possible for brands to use their resources in a continuous loop without degradation or loss of value.